Hello children, uh, let's continue with the chapter life processes. We are starting with the second metabolic process that is respiration today. And particularly in this, top, in this video, we'll be talking about respiration in plants. Now, when we talk about the term respiration, it means the complete process of taking in oxygen, oxidation of food and release of energy, which is called as respiration. If we have to show it by uh, equation, it would be food along with oxygen give rise to CO2, water and energy. And what are the byproducts which are released? Byproducts are the end products that is carbon dioxide and water. Now when we have to talk about respiration, there is a similar term called as breathing and sometimes it is used by children um, in much the same manner but they are very very different from each other. Why? Because breathing means only taking in oxygen and giving out CO2, nothing else. It is only a physical process. No, no energy is released during breathing and no enzymes are also needed. But if you compare, if you compare respiration from breathing, it is, it of course takes a taken oxygen, the breathing, the breathing process has taken oxygen, that oxygen will be used for the breakdown of food into energy. The, uh, you have already discussed, we have already discussed about digestion and breaking down of food into simpler substances like glucose, fatty acids and amino acids. Uh, which basically will be oxidized in the process of respiration and they will be converted into a usable energy form which is called as ATP. Now if we have to categorize respiration it would be two breathing which is also called as external respiration cellular or internal respiration we have just discussed that is it will be carried out in each and every cell of the body when the uh, simpler food will be oxidized oxidized means the addition of oxygen will take place and they will be breaking down into energy and where it is happening which organelle basically it is mitochondria now if we have to compare respiration and photosynthesis we can say that they are just opposite to each other why because in photosynthesis we have discussed it's a process which is anabolic that means complex substances are being formed from simpler substances whereas respiration is a catabolic process that means a bigger compound energy molecule is broken down into smaller to release energy now there is a small activity to show that how to show CO2 is produced during respiration. For example, we'll take a glass tube, we'll add lime water into it. When we blow air into the lime water, after some times, you will see that there is a color change, particularly the lime water will turn milky. And this milkiness uh, gives us an idea that CO2 is basically released during exhalation because CO2 is believed to turn lime water milky as you have read in class 7. Now types of respiration, if we talk about two kinds of respiration, anaerobic and aerobic, it, respiration has two steps. The first step is common both to aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. We have discussed about glucose being formed after digestion of food molecules that is being transported through villi. And now this glucose will break down. Glucose is a six carbon molecule. You know that it is six C6 H12O6. It will broke down, break down into two, three carbon molecule pyruvate. And this pyruvate basically, the making of pyruvate is called as glycolysis, which is an anaerobic process. That means it is taking place in absence of oxygen and it is occurring in the cytoplasm of the cell. The second step would be pyruvate will be broken down into CO2 and energy. And this step is different in different organisms. For example, in, in, the, in the ones where it is carried out in presence of oxygen, they would be called as aerobic. And in absence of oxygen, they would be called as anaerobic. Now, just see the types of respiration. We have just discussed glucose 6-carbon molecule in the cytoplasm is covered, converted into a 3-carbon molecule pyruvate. Now, on the basis of oxygen or lack of oxygen or presence of oxygen, we have three pathways. For example, first, in the absence of oxygen, which is also called as anaerobic oxidation or fermentation, which happens in yeast and bacteria, the end products will be ethanol, CO2 and energy. In lack of oxygen, which occurs in our muscle cells during exercise when a lot of energy is being used oxygen is being used by the cells so sometimes the 
mediating pro, uh, mediating substance is produced which is called as lactic acid and this lactic acid is believed to cause a lot of fatigue and cramps you must have observed cramps during physical or strenuous exercise or after dancing it is all because of the formation of lactic acids in muscles the third um, process is in the presence of oxygen which happens in our mitochondria mitochondria of the cells which releases co2 water and energy to mention the intestinal parasites the parasites which are present in the intestines of mammals and liver few they all respire anaerobically and also the rbcs which is called as the uh, red blood cells they because they don't have mitochondria so they also respire anaerobically now whatever energy that we have seen in the three processes basically synthesize a of currency molecule which is called as atp you already know atp stands for adenosine triphosphate which is also called as the energy currency of the cell and how it is formed it is formed by the combination of adp adenosine diphosphate and phosphate molecules now if we have to briefly compare between the anaerobic and aerobic respiration will do it absence of oxygen presence of oxygen glucose breaks down completely glucose do not break down completely end products are you can see here alcohol co2 lactic acid here it is carbon dioxide water and energy now the point to be noted is ki anaerobic respiration is not a very efficient mode of respiration because the amount per one molecule of glucose only two atp molecules are released whereas in in aerobic it is much higher that is um, by the decomposition of one glucose molecule th 38 atps are released now talk about respiration in plants we know plants photosynthesize so there is a lot of oxygen which is synthesized in the body of plants so they don't have a special respiratory organ the oxygen which is present during photosynthesis can be used during daytime when they are photosynthesizing hence low requirement of oxygen in the day whereas if you talk about night the respiration is just similar to the humans that means they take in oxygen and they give out co2 and the respiration rate is much slower because most of the components of the plant we have already discussed in class 9 that they are dead now we have to talk about the three different kind of exchanges of gases and roots stems and leaves roots having root hair in the soil the root hairs are unicellular structures they are extensions of epidermal cells which are very thin so that the diffusion can take place easily air from the soil spaces enters into the root hairs it diffuses into the root hairs because from higher concentration to lower and then this air will go to the other cell which is a neighboring cells of the root hairs and this is how it will be circulated in the root the second is stem the stem also have breathing pores which are called as lenticels these are small pores which are present on the bark of the stems here basically the air from the atmosphere diffuses into the lenticels and it helps in the process of respiration of stem similarly in both the processes the co2 will also be released out through diffusion as we know the co2 from the bodies will move out because of the higher concentration to the atmosphere into the lower concentration the last is leaves how does respiration takes place in leaves and plants leaves you know have tiny pores called as stomata the stomata the oxygen will diffuses into the stomatal pore from the atmosphere it will go into the intercellular spaces and then it will be circulated into the neighboring cells of the leaf just to mention one point as we know that the similar the simplest organisms of plants for example spirogyra which is an algae they only uh, respire through diffusion i hope the respiration general respiration and respiration in plants is clear in the next class we will be talking about respiration in animals